Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. In the wake of President Obama's re-election, the stock market is down 300 points. It has dropped like a rock. European stocks are falling like a rock. We've talked about this before, that there are companies in the United States that are sitting on over $2 trillion worth of cash, $2.3 trillion worth of cash, and they're not investing it primarily because of the uncertainty and the obstacles created by President Obama's tax burden and regulatory burden. So they were hoping to see a change of direction in our fiscal policy yesterday. They did not. We're getting four more years of exactly the same. And so the stock market, consequently, has just fallen through uh, the basement. Uh, So we got that uh, going on, the stock market reacting clearly. And here again, we see the story that Mitt Romney got fewer votes than John McCain did in 2008. That means that Republicans stayed home. Mitt Romney has about 56 million votes nationwide. John McCain got nearly 60 million in 2008. So it looks like Republicans may have stayed home in droves. Well, to help us uh, sort through all of this is a man who's been a guest on Focal Point before and was a candidate for the Republican nomination for the presidency, uh, Herman Cain. Herman, uh, at one time, had a talk radio program right here on the AFR Talk Network. Uh, Herman, welcome back to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Brian, I'm happy to be with you, but the statistic that you just gave is the reason that Barack Obama won. You see, in 2008, 6 million conservatives stayed home, and what you just told me is that in addition to that 6 million that stayed home, another 4 million stayed home. So those people who stayed home because they weren't excited about Mitt Romney, they can basically take part of the credit for what happened on Tuesday in the presidential election. I don't mean to start off on such a dire note, Brian, but facts are facts. Well, you know, and it seems to me, Herman, we've got to start thinking now about about 2016, assuming there's going to be a country left to save by by 2016 because we can't afford to repeat this mistake. Um, So obviously, according to this statistic, got a lot of disengaged conservatives, didn't even care enough to show up and vote, weren't enthused about Mitt Romney. Uh, and we had conservatives, Herman, that were in the primary. We had conservatives like you. We had Rick Perry. We had Rick Santorum, Michelle Bachman. Uh, and yet we wound up with a Massachusetts moderate. Uh, how, do we keep, uh, how do we keep this mistake from happening again? Well, Brian, I never thought that I would say this, and this is the first time publicly that I have said it. We need a third party to save this country. Not Ron Paul and the Ron Paulites. No, we need a legitimate third party to challenge the current system that we have because I don't believe that the Republican Party, although I ran as a Republican, I have been voting Republican for decades, I don't believe the Republican Party has the ability to rebrand itself against the mainstream media machine that that blatantly works to support this president and other liberals, as well as the Democrats, and works blatantly to try and tarnish the brand of what the Republican Republican Party stands for. Well, you know, it struck me as I watched this campaign unfold, I I said this to some reporters at the Values Voter Summit, that if Mitt Romney loses this election, there is going to be a third party, because conservatives that make up the heart and soul of the Republican Party, that actually believe in the values that are enshrined in the Republican Party platform, those voters, they're the ones that knock on doors, they give the small donations, they make the phone calls, they get out the vote, and they're tired of being ignored by the Republican Party elites and dissed and having their values sort of trampled into the ground. And there's only so much that they're going to be able to take. And so I just wonder, Herman, if there is a... There, there is a core of people out there that are interested in a third party because the Republican Party no longer speaks for them. And let's add one more dimension, and that's the Tea Party movement. The Tea Party movement, they get frustrated because the Republican Party is not perfect, i.e., according to that definition of perfect. Well, I got news for everybody. No party is perfect. You work hard for the one that comes closest to your beliefs and your ideals. And so even within the Republican Party, 
there is fragmentation and there is division. You know, the one thing you can say about many of the Democrats that voted for Barack Obama, you know, they come together even if they have their differences internally more so than Republicans do. And that's unfortunately because that's why we ended up with another four more years of a president that, quite frankly, uh, has this country on the wrong track. And even though he has this country on the wrong track, 51% of the 54% that voted for him, they voted for him anyway. So we've got some serious issues uh, over the next four years that are going to have to be dealt with. And I, I am one of the most optimistic people on the planet, Brian. But I'm not optimistic that this president is going to do anything differently. Now, talking about this third-party thing for a second, it seems to me that in order for this to be viable, right now these third-party efforts are just kind of fringe groups. They don't have really any capacity to become a viable political force. It seems right. like what you would have to have with the Republican Party is this third party would have to be made up of people who are in the Republican Party now, have leadership positions or have had leadership positions in the Republican Party, and they sort of, in mass, leave the Republican Party together. And they leave the Republican Party, as it exists today, in the hands of the elites who show real no concern, show no real concern for our conservative values. Let them have their Republican Party. Let the big tent Republicans have their uh, big tent uh, there and, and their handful of supporters. Leave them to, to their folks, their tiny handful of people who are Republican Party elites and the blue bud, the country club types, and the rest of the Republicans who really do have a heart that beats with a passion for the values that are in the Republican Party platform. And it seems to me, Herman, you've, you've got your platform already for that third party. It's, it's in the Republican Party platform. It's just not being used by the blue bloods in the Republican Party. So anyway, I want your, your reaction to that. Now, is that what it would take to get a viable third party going? And do you think that that kind of coalition could be pulled together? It's going to take 50 coalitions. You need one for every state because of the wacky rules state by state that they have that makes it difficult for a third party to emerge. So let's say, for example, that that was a group of people with some leadership and with some money, because it does take money, uh, really wanted to do that. You would need 50 coalitions to overcome the rules that have been set up in all of the states to discourage an effective third party. So, yes. Now, here's the other thing about the possibility of a third party, and that is there are just as many disgruntled Democrats that would probably be a part of this movement as there are Republicans who are sick of the political class. And so I think that realistically um, that it, it is more viable today than it has ever been. And you know me, Brian, this hasn't been something that I have been pontificating or talking about and, or promoting, but this country is in trouble, and it is clear that neither party, neither of the major parties, is going to fix the problems we face. You know, and it seems, Herman, that what we've gotten, the message that we've gotten from the elites in the Republican Party, the values voters that made up the heart and soul, the heartbeat of the Republican Party, kind of the message that we've gotten from the party elites when we complain about the fact that our values are not getting the attention that, that they deserve, that our country needs, is basically they say, well, where else do you have to go? They just assume we've got no place to go, so they can kind of take us for granted. They can right. kind of pat us on the head, and we'll continue to soldier on, and they don't have to pay any attention to us. And I've always thought it'd be great if the shoe was on the other foot where they were the ones that had no place to go. You're right. And unfortunately, uh, that's why a lot of people stayed home. That's why, look, John McCain, with all due respect, a great war hero and veteran. But he was not the right candidate in 2008. Mitt Romney was a much stronger candidate in 2012. But when you have millions of conservatives stay home for whatever little reason that they want to use to stay home, this is why we're going to continue to have leadership. No, let me rephrase that. I don't consider President Obama a leader. He's occupying the position of the leader of the free world. Uh, we're going to continue to end up with those kind of people, politicians, in these, uh, in these positions in terms of uh, trying to help direct this nation. 
our problems will be kicked down the road for more years, period. You know, I'm looking here at a piece on Politico uh, featuring a quote from Steve Schmidt, who is a Republican uh, strategist, and he's basically calling for the Republican Party elites to stand up to what he calls the, quote, extreme statements and nonsense coming from conservatives in the GOP. And he mentioned Rush Limbaugh by name as an example of a conservative voice in the GOP. And he's actually calling for a civil war in the Republican Party. It's time for Republican elected leaders to stand up and repudiate uh, social conservatives in the Republican Party. So it seems like Steve Schmidt here is maybe throwing down the gauntlet when it comes to what the Republican Party is going to be and basically saying to social conservatives, look, it's time for you to leave. And no, maybe it's time for social conservatives in the Republican Party to say, hey, we have as much a right to this party as you do, Steve Schmidt and the other poobahs. Maybe it's your time to leave. You know, there is a way for us not to compromise our social values, our social conservative values, and at the same time focus on the really big issues that we need to fix. I don't think having a narrative that's going to make it either or is going to help social conservatives, fiscal conservatives. One of the big problems, Brian, is people have gotten connected too often with labels. Labels are dividing us. Labels are destroying us. We need to get past the narrative of labels and talk about the narrative of solutions to the big problems we saw. That's why I ran for president in the first place. Not because I had uh, this great aspiration to be president of the United States simply for the sake of being president. I ran because I wanted to make a difference. Our guest in our decision maker line has been Herman Cain, candidate for the presidential nomination for the Republican Party and a key member of the conservative media. Uh, and issuing a call today for a third party. Breaking news here on Focal Point. Well, Herman, thanks for taking time with us. Always a pleasure to chat with you, and we will see where this goes. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Brian. Happy to do it. Herman Cain calling for a third party. Focal Point AFR Talk back in two. When it comes